All right, in this video, we're going to look at finding the uh, derivative of a cubic function, a cubic polynomial, um, using first principles. That's uh, the uh, limit function for the average rate of change. And uh, the first thing I did was I asked Desmos, I put in the function, and I asked Desmos to graph the derivative. So I don't know what the derivative is, but I can see the graph of it. Turns out this is a parabola, and I know the x-intercepts of the parabola based on the graph. And uh, that actually is enough information, um, plus knowing the... Uh, um, the maximum point, or sorry, the minimum of the vertex, if I know those three points, I can actually figure out the equation of the derivative without using my calculus. So this is just for fun. <laughs> and um, the first thing that I, that I recognize is that if this is one of the uh, x-intercepts then of the derivative, then f prime of that number has to equal zero. So that's how in this equation for my derivative, um, I can see that if here we have x, and here we have x minus 4 thirds. I know that when x is 4 thirds, we're going to get 0. 4 thirds minus 4 thirds equals 0. So that's how I knew this is one of the factors of this parabola. Here, I know that when f prime of 0 equals 0, then we have 0 <laughs> as one of the factors, or x is one of the factors, because we put 0 in there, it's good to go. And the last thing we know is that the... Um, Vertex is, has an x and a y value that are solutions to the uh, derivative equation. So I put x as 2 thirds, and I know that when I add all this stuff or multiply all this stuff together, I'm going to get negative 4 thirds because that's the y value. f prime of 2 thirds is negative 4 thirds. So just doing some simple algebra here, I can find finally that a equals 3. And if a equals 3, then the derivative is 3 times my two linear factors, x and x minus 4 thirds. And we distribute 3x times x is 3x squared, and 3x times negative 4 thirds is negative 4x. So without doing any calculus, I was able to use, find the derivative thanks to Desmos. Now let's see if I can actually make 3x squared minus 4x happen when I use my first principles. So here's the definition of derivative, and remember this is the average rate of change function, and then we allow the change in x to approach 0, um, and that's how we get a slope function for any value of x. So here I have x plus h as my uh, argument or input value. So everywhere I see an x, I replace it with x plus h. You can see that here. So I have to cube this and square that. Here is f of x. So I simply just put in x, which is copying down the entire function. Um, now I have to cube x plus h. With a reminder, this is x plus h squared. And we have to multiply it by another x plus h. Um, some of you might have seen this before, some not. But uh, you can use the multiplication algorithm to uh, multiply polynomials. So you start with just the, uh, the units place um, and then and so on. So if you've seen this before, great. It's a really good uh, handy way to keep everything straight because all the values line up. Anyway, this is where I put x plus h cubed. All of this stuff here is the cube of x plus h. But now I have to multiply negative 2 times the square of x plus h. So that's where I put in x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And then I also here have to remember to get rid of these parentheses, I distribute the negative. So I get negative x cubed uh, plus 2x squared minus 3 down here. I almost forgot to add 3 for my original function. So a lot of times if you find you made a mistake, that'll usually be where one of those mistakes is made. You forgot to carry down part of the function that wasn't squared or cubed. <coughs> anyway, carrying on, all I have to do is distribute the negative 2. And then collect like terms, and by collecting like terms, I end up finding a lot of subtraction. Uh, almost the entire function f of x is going to subtract out with a portion of the f of x plus h, leaving you with, if you did your work right, a bunch of terms that have an h factor in it somewhere. If any of these terms does not have an h factor in it, that means you made a mistake up here somewhere by dropping out a term. So now I'm going to factor out an h from each of the terms here, resulting in this which allows me to then get the h out of the bottom. And at this point, because h is out of the numerator, I can allow h to approach 0, which is going to affect uh, any term that still has an h factor left in it. So these three terms are going to 0 out, and we're left with 3x squared minus 4x. You may or may not recall that that's the conclusion we made without using the calculus. So the good news is, if I thought about it ahead of time, um, I knew I was doing all of this work correctly because it was working out the way it was supposed to. Thanks for watching.